I have some very exciting news to share. Raise Your Edge and Triton are partnering up for the event in Vietnam. What does it mean? As an official partner for Triton, we get the opportunity to create exclusive and unique content around the Triton series. We're going to be hosting watch parties on the Raise Your Edge channel, sweating the action, commentating, breaking down hands. And on top of that, I will also be taking hands and spots, breaking them down, pre-flop, post-flop, ICM, from the high stakes pros battling it out against each other. So very much looking forward to this. And on top of that, we're also gonna be running some special discounts and promotions for our courses. So if you wanna invest in your poker career, keep your eyes open, stay tuned. We're gonna be announcing everything on our social media platforms. I know a lot of you guys have been asking whether I'm gonna be playing any of the Triton series. No, I'm too busy. I have so much stuff going on with Raise Your Edge. Also send them playing poker myself, studying, creating content, updating the courses. And I'm also super excited to be working with Triton in the background, delivering you additional content and value around that event. So stay tuned. We're gonna be announcing everything on our social media, on also my social media when we're doing the watch parties. And yeah, so it's gonna be exciting two weeks. Looking forward and see you guys and good luck at the tables. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on three bad pots and not only how we're supposed to play it according to a solver, but how we're supposed to play it in real tournaments. So let's get right into it. All right, this is the spot cutoff. We're facing a three bet here from the small blind. Let's get right into it. We are around 30, 30 big blinds deep. And usually what people would do if they're in the early stages, middle stages, so like a lot of different stages in a tournament, they would pull up a chip EV range in order to have an orientation, which is not bad. It's better than nothing and trying to guess, but there is a more accurate way in order to solve these spots. Again, it's fine, but what I'm also trying to preach for many years that in tournaments, you need to consider your edge, you need to consider your future game, as well as the impact of ICM, which exists at any stage of the tournament. Now, over the last one to two years, we've been doing more research and we recently launched some more ICM adjusted preflop ranges for all sorts of stages of a tournament. And I know not all of you can afford that. So I want to share some crucial concepts here for free that you can incorporate in your game in order to avoid puns, uh, spots where you lost post flop because you made a bad preflop decision that could have been avoided in the first place. And a lot of the spots where we lose a lot of chips very often begin by defending poorly versus three bets in tournaments. So here we have a typical chip EV range. You see here it's a 1000 runner tournament. 50% of the field are left, 30 big blinds average. So this is the typical chip EV range, uh, GTO range. If you're new to this, it basically gives you the perfect solution for playing preflop, assuming that your opponent is also playing the perfect strategy. So we always wanna make adjustments. And as you can see here, we defend really wide. I mean, we're cut off for small blind. Ranges can still be relatively wide. Let's have a look how small blind is supposed to play this spot so we can keep that in mind for later on. He's supposed to three bet 9.6. Percent, not too much suited hands three betting. He's also jamming a lot of these orange hands and three betting a lot of these red marked hands. So if we go back, you can take a screenshot if that helps. If, if, if it helps you. Now, if we consider that there's payout structures, that at some point the bubble begins, even though it's relatively far away. To me, I've always had the impression that a lot of these defense just don't feel right. Like queen nine suited, a six suited. I mean, you need to understand that these ranges are basically chip EV ranges with anties. Don't worry if you're one of the tournament masterclass, they're way more accurate. I've always considered the impact of ICM. I've always considered population tenant tendencies in order for you to avoid these margin spot. Or actually, it's not even margin. It's not profitable, you're losing money. But we cannot cover in one range view all sorts of different stages, right? This is where here, if you wanna take it to the next level, you can practice all sorts of different stages so you're not just playing static ranges. So here, boom, you see much tighter. And hear me out, it's gonna get even crazier if we have a look at the small blind ranges. So we overall fold more, but if you remember, if you look at the jamming percentage here, actually two thirds of all of the hands we're defending we're going all in with. So overall, we fold more, but we play a more aggressive strategy. This is not necessarily good, and I would not necessarily advise you to play so aggressive. We should play tighter, and hands that are marked as jams, I think are much better as a call, because typically the population 
especially if you play in weaker fields, are not three betting as much as they're supposed to. So here, these ranges aren't perfect either. You need to make these additional exploits. And I'm gonna share that with you. So again, if we go into the three betting range, we see here, remember we had 9% three betting from the small blind. Now we have 12.38%. To round it up 12%, typically you won't see such aggressive three betting going on from most opponents on average. So the counter strategy jamming so aggressively is not the ideal strategy. So here I would take it one step further. I would jam less, call more, and overall I would call less, um, even less than ICM suggests here, and even fold out some of these king nine suited, queen nine suited type of fans that are marked as calls in order to consider that I would assume most people would play a uh, three bit 11, 12%. And in some soft live games, if your opponent three bets him from the small blind, he literally has four aces on his hand, right? So it's very often very easy for us to make really good adjustments and you should do so when you play tournament poker. So here we're already one step closer to what I would call playing real preflop tournament ranges and not just some solver ranges. That is a very important concept. And if you compare that here with what small men, we see also way less gems, right? If you see here, we jam 5% with 30 big blinds. And this is, comes down to ICM telling you, try to protect your stack as much as possible. If you can be aggressive, try to do that with three bets and make your opponent fold a lot of hands as well. You see that, especially with like 25, 30 and 40 big blinds, that under ICM consideration, basically in real tournament poker, we do less, way less all in than we would do under Chip EV, where with 30 big blinds, you will see a lot of these queen 10 suited, jack 10 suited, pocket pairs, all ins. Here, yes, uh, a lot of these pocket, sorry, Chip EV, you will see these, all of these all ins. In ICM, it's uh, three betting or calling, right? But then also trying to induce those jams from ace five, ace four suited. It's not necessarily that ICM plays a more passive strategy, but you will also see way more inducing. But you will also see much more flitting with these uh, suited broadways, or here even inducing with ace queen off, right? Whereas in Chippy B, he just wants to jam it. So this also allows us to, to three bet more as a bluff, and that's why we play over a, a more aggressive strategy. Um, and especially in ICM, it makes a lot of sense. In these days, what are the first hands that come to your mind that you want to fob a jam as a bluff, right? Most people understand it's gonna be ace five suited, ace three suited, ace four suited. So there's so much more EV in inducing a jam with a hand like ace queen off, because also you get calls from queen jack suited, king queen off, and it plays really well post flop. So a lot to learn here, a lot of takeaways where you start grasping the main concept of an ICM and how it impacts our ranges. What I really personally like is seeing that we want to stay away from these deep jams that are very often marginal, and we might win half half a big blind, a quarter big blind in the long term by risking 25, 30, 35 big blinds, which, big blinds, which is absolutely insane to me. We do see here, when, our, when we face a three bet, that now we jam more, because now we can win way more, right? With the open race and reshoving 30 big blinds, we can only win four big blinds, five big blinds, six, six big blinds, depending on the size of the antis and depending on the size of the open race. But now, facing a three bet, you will see that a lot that ICM then understands now it's really worth playing an aggressive counter strategy with lots of all-ins because now we win, th uh, we, sorry, we risk our remaining 28 big blinds to win those, what is in the middle, seven, nine, 10, nine to 12 big blinds depending on the three bet size. So it's a much better risk reward ratio. So yes, we still risk a lot, but now we can win more. And when you can win very little, usually ICM doesn't want to risk a lot and uses way more three betting. I really encourage you to run some money bubble situations. You will also see way more three betting uh, with smaller stack sizes. It's also something you will learn here if you if you are the lucky owner. You will see way more three betting with 12 big blinds, 15 big blinds and heavy ICM situations. The higher the ICM pressure, and you will see that the closer you get to a 30% left money bubble, the more you do three betting with 12 big blinds and you're not committed because the ICM pressure makes you not committed to an all in. 
and you have way more wiggle room and room to maneuver with these smaller stack size. And then you will also learn how you can take advantage and playing back against big stacks that open 10, 7 off, jack 8 off, jack 7 off around the money bubble and you're literally printing money and you will survive the bubble more often as a bigger stack than just yeah, you make it in the money, then you're three big blinds and then you're out. I get this a lot. Hey, Ben, you know, I am I actually play solid in the early mid game, but I'm not really able to run it deep. Um, that's one of the reasons where people have no clue how to play a mid stake and that there's still a lot of things that you can do in order to also accumulate chips around the bubble. Our ICM tier in paired is finally open again. People have been waiting for months. You will finally get to learn proper and realistic preflop ranges considering ICM. It has been proven now that ICM impacts the early and middle stages of a tournament a lot more than people think. So stop that bullshit of copy pasting chip EV ranges. You can also study money bubble ranges of large fields. This would take you days to solve on your own if you wanna solve multiple spots, weeks, if not even months, and you can get it all all in paired you can practice you can review all sorts of different scenarios also final table situations with video content so now it's your chance to grab your hands on a tool that will teach you realistic preflop ranges for tournaments considering ICM in all different stages Super important concept. So let's sum it up. Defend tighter in theory, in ICM theory. We want to be jamming a lot against three bets. However, I would not advise this in, in real tournament poker. If you play against someone aggressive, you see it's a viable and very profitable strategy, and then you should do so. But if you're not really sure, just call. It's fine. Again, I would against most players even for the king nine suited, ten nine suited, ace ten of these hands here, because again, I assume that people are three betting less in practice. Also, as the small blind three better, uh, try to induce more with ace queen off pocket nines with 30 big blinds to get those jams from the lower pocket pairs and lower suited aces. Yeah, and I hope you learned uh, more concepts here around three betting. And now, and this is super important in poker, when you see one spot mirror this knowledge onto all the other positions, you can literally now solve 60% uh, left, 50%, 40% left, a crucial phase of the tournament, like basically all these kind of stages around uh, half of the field left. And when you see now the adjustments we make, cutoff facing a three versus small lanes, you can apply this for hijack versus small blind, middle position versus small blind. Go a little bit tighter, even for under the gun facing three bets for middle position. When you see the chippy ranges, you know that you should go one third tighter, like you, def you fold way more, and you at least play way more accurate ranges than the solver is telling you only in chippy V and not considering ICM. This is gonna be a major improvement in your preflop game. You will be less involved in tricky situations post slop, less hero calling, or, or on average having a stronger hand. And you can see what kind of secret, uh, secret adjustments we're already here uh, supposed to make. I hope you found some value. If you have any other questions around these ranges, again, if you're interested in these kind of preflop ranges from our ICM tier, check out the description. And uh, yeah, again, hope found you, some, you guys found some value. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and then see you guys in the next video.